Yeah. For the Lord, you have one more opportunity, oh God, to give him glory, to give him great praise. And we bless his holy name. Hallelujah. If you could rest on your feet all over the building as we prepare to go before God this morning. Hallelujah. Come on and open up your mouth and give him praise. God, you're wonderful and we bless you. God, you're merciful and kind and we give you glory. Hallelujah, Jesus. If we had 10,000 tongues, we still could not bless you enough. We still could not praise you enough. But with the one we have, we offer you praise on this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, wonderful and merciful God, we thank you. Father, we thank you right now, oh God, for your loving kindness and your tender mercy. We thank you for a new day that you've allowed us to see with new grace and new mercies, new opportunities to do better, be better, have better, God, live better, love better, forgive. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, oh God, for blood yet running warm in our veins, for the activities of our limbs, for being clothed in our right mind, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for reasonable portions of health. We thank you, oh God, for our heart and our mind to be in your worship on today, oh God, to receive of your word, oh God. We thank you, oh God, that you've kept us, oh God, from nature seen and unseen, oh God. We thank you, oh God, that you guarded our hearts and our minds and our homes and our children and our families. God, we say thank you, oh God. You've been wonderful to us, oh God. We could never repay your goodness and your greatness towards us, God. But with the one mouth we have, God, we say thank you on this morning. Father, we ask right now, God, that you first forgive us for every sin and shortcoming, oh God. Be it thought, word, or deed, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, every place we've fallen short, oh God, every place we didn't measure up, oh God, when we did what you told us not to do, oh God, and when we didn't do what you told us to do, we ask you right now, God, to forgive us, oh God, purify our hearts right now, God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, oh God, build us from the inside out, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, we ask you right now, God, that you be in the midst of this place, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, that you move from heart to heart, oh God, Move from breast to breast, oh God, in the name of Jesus. God, you know what we stand in a need of on today, oh God, and I'm asking that you meet every need, oh God. Oh God, that you hear our hearts' prayers, oh God, on today. In the name of Jesus, oh God, whatever we came searching for, God, on today, God, I'm asking that you meet the needs of your people, oh God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, oh God, only you know, oh God, what we stand in the midst of, oh God. And I'm asking that you hear our hearts cry of Jesus, oh God. God, as your people enter today, God, let them enter with thanksgiving on our lips, oh God. Let them enter with praise on their tongue, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, with gratefulness in their hearts, oh God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, oh God. Oh God, that we might cry out to you, oh God, Hosanna in the highest, in the name of the Lord Jesus, oh God, as your man servant come forth, oh God. Oh God, we ask that you would do him from on high with power, oh God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, oh God, be life in him right now, oh God. Be strength in the name of Jesus. Every place he's weak or wounded, oh God, or weary, I ask that you strengthen him right now, God. Build him up in the name of the Lord Jesus, oh God. Oh God, that he might deliver rainbow word, oh God. Word that's going to speak light, oh God, into every dark place, oh God. A word that's, oh God, going to lead crooked paths into straightness. In the name of the Lord Jesus, oh God. Oh God, let your spirit permeate this place like never before. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, oh God. Oh God, rest on this house, oh God. Send your anointing that makes ministry easy, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Oh God, just rest on this place, God. Allow fresh wind, oh God, to move in this atmosphere, oh God. We desire to be a place, oh God, where you can have your way in here, oh God. We say yes to your will and yes to your way, oh God. Move how you want to move, oh God. Touch where you want to touch, God. Bless where you want to bless, oh God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, take not your Holy Spirit from us, oh God, but allow it to do what needs to be done in this atmosphere. In the name of Jesus, help us to prepare you the way for the word, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God, touch your musicians right now, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God, be life and help in them now, God. In the name of Jesus, oh God, touch your worship period, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God, God, that we might have break up fallow ground, oh God, that the seed of the word might take root in their hearts, oh God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, oh God, we thank you right now, oh God, because we stand in expectation of your greatness, oh God. We stand in expectation of your power, God. We stand in expectation of a move of your spirit. Oh God, we thank you in advance, oh God, for healing hearts and changing minds. 
for saving lives and opening doors. We thank you right now, oh God, for continuing to be the God we know you to be, the one that heals and saves, delivers and sets free, open doors and makes ways. We thank you right now, oh God, for being God all by yourself and with the clapping of our hands, oh God, and with the opening of our mouths. We say thank you, God. We say have your way in this place. Oh God, we bless you and we magnify you. None like you in heaven or in earth. And we lift you up and we give you good praise. Come on, people of God, clap your hands. Open up your mouth. And help me seal the prayer with praise. We bless you in this place, Father. We give you great praise because you're a great God. And we give you glory and we give you honor. It's in the mighty, righteous name of Jesus, I pray. Somebody clap your hands and say amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. And we bless his holy name. Hallelujah. And we love him on today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We have come into this house to gather in his name to worship him. We have come into this house to gather in his name to worship him. Oh, we have come into this house to gather in his name to worship Christ our Lord. Oh, worship him, Christ our Lord. We have come, we have come into this house. 
Come on and help me celebrate the Lord in this spirit, in this place. 
Thank you, Jesus. Why you clapping? Help me celebrate our man serving Bishop C.D. Cannon Sr. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. We thank God. Hallelujah. Why you clapping? Clap for yourself is in the words of evangelist. Let us see. Hallelujah. We thank God for those that are joining us on the live stream. Hallelujah. Do me a favor, like and share. Share the goodness of Jesus with somebody that may be home watching like you're watching from online. Amen. We are grateful. I am grateful. Anytime we get to assemble in the household of faith. Hallelujah, Jesus. We got people fighting over in other countries and they can't call on the name of Jesus. Even though we, die, we know what the name of Jesus can do. There's somebody somewhere that desires to open their mouth and can't. That desires to lift their hands and they can't. Amen. But because you can, you ought to. Because the Lord has been good. But by the grace of God, there go me. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank the Lord. Amen. For another day, another opportunity to give him glory in this place. Hallelujah. By way of announcements, I want to remind um, Power that on this coming Friday, amen, we will be having our senior annual senior holiday breakfast. Amen. We will be at Rudy's in Harrington. <coughs> Excuse me, at 9 a.m. If you plan to attend, please let Sister Tisha know. My memory ain't great. Y'all tell me y'all coming. I might forget altogether. Amen, somebody. But let her know so we can be prepared to receive you on this um, coming Friday. I'm excited. Amen. I learned so much in the presence of our senior saints. I love it. I love it. I love it. Amen. So we're excited about this coming Friday. There are other events going on throughout the month. Please govern yourselves accordingly. I want to say they should be on the screen. Y'all can run them while I'm talking um, so that everybody can get it in their, their scene, their sight, and all that good stuff. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. I'm excited. We're going to move forward with our, in our worship on today with our tithe and our offering. This is the time, amen, that we designate to be a financial blessing to the ministry. Amen. I learned a long time ago and I say it, and I keep saying it, you cannot be God-given no matter how hard you try. And what I'm learning in this season is sometimes the open door or the grant of favor or the Lord even pricking the heart of people sometimes can equate to more than money. Amen. And because I serve like I do, I have no choice but to believe that with the, the doors that the Lord's opening and the ways that the Lord is making is a result, direct result, amen, of how I sow of my time, talent, and treasure into this ministry. Amen. Amen. So I'm not surprised when doors open. I'm not surprised when favor is granted. It is an expectation. I don't know who said favor ain't fair, but when you do what you're supposed to do by God, favor is fair. I earn that fair and square, and I expect it the Lord to do when no other power can do because of my willingness to sow into this part of God's vineyard. I offered to create this time. This is my good seed that I'm sowing into fertile ground and by faith I decree I will never be broke another day in my life. Amen. You can pass your offers to the right or to the left. The brethren in the, in the nice little clean suits Amen. They will serve you on today. We thank God for them. Amen. This is the part of worship that we really come for. Amen. I remember a time we were in the hotel and I, you know, we have, we have all these accoutrements. It was just me and a couple other people and some mics. We had no music. And I used to be like, they just looking at me like they want me to hurry up so they take care of their pastor. I, and and I, I, felt, I real talk felt that way for a long time. I'm like, well, what are we doing up here if they don't care? But I, after a while, I seen Brother Steve foot pat. So I was like, okay, so he with me. <laughs> he might not clap. He ain't going to jump up. But that foot pat, let me know I'm, I'm in the vein. Amen. But I understand that worship, this part of worship, helps to prepare you the word. We come out of the street. We get out of our cars. Um, sometimes we in a happy mood. Sometimes we in a not so happy mood. You, your pantyhose rip on the way in. Your kids acting up. You and your husband or her wife get to arguing in the car over dinner. Who knows? Over football teams. It goes on in these streets. Um, but when you enter into this place, amen, our prayer is that your heart is free and lifted to receive the word that comes forth. Amen. It's the word that speaks light into dark pathways. It's the word, amen, that, that can make crooked pair of straights is the word that once that seed is planted into the soil of your heart that it takes root and brings forth fruit in due season 
Amen. And I'm excited that we have a, a pastor here. We have a preacher here. We have a, uh, what's the word I want to look for? He is an orator of the gospel, if you will. Amen. That, that can deliver, deliver the word in a way that makes so much sense um, and gives us what we need to keep going in the things of God. So if you do me a favor, please, and rest on your feet all over the building and help me receive our pastor. Um, our favorite, my favorite preacher, Bishop Carlos Dwayne Kennedy. Receive him as he comes. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we are to rejoice and be glad. Am I the only one cold? Where's my gauge at? What it mean when your hands is cold? That mean I'm getting money? David said, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. God is a good God, even on a bad day. Some of y'all missed that. I said, God is a good God. Amen. Even on a bad day, it's such a blessing and an honor to be here once again. Um, folk are leaving here. Amen. And just to live is a blessing. I want to honor God for all of you, to my wife for leading us in praise and worship. Amen. To these musicians. All the musicians this week. <laughs> yes. Amen. Our, our, our organist shows just how much of a man he is. Even in defeat, he is where he is supposed to be. So we honor him today. <laughs> to all of you, God's children, to our elders, to our senior members, to anybody that may be a first-time guest, to those that have joined us via the stream, we thank God for you. My little sister's here today. Amen. Um, love you too. Um, what title are you walking in today with capacity? No. I've watched this young lady grow into what she is today. Oh, y'all ready for Children's Church? Okay. I've watched her grow into what she is today. And I am godly proud of her. She is an example of ministry that goes beyond the four walls of the church. She has kept God first in everything she has done. And because she has done that, God has elevated her. And God has taken her into some rooms um, that most saints don't get to go in. Um, and she, when she goes, the word goes with her. That's good preaching already. Amen. And I tell her all the time, and, and I get to say it publicly today, just how proud I am of uh, Sister Sade Truitt. Amen. Let us get to the word of God on this morning. Two Sundays in a row, we're going to try to beat the rain. I told y'all that the Cowboys was going to win last week. Let us get to the word of God as found in uh, Philippians, the third chapter. We don't stand. Normally, uh, the protocol is to stand for the reading of the word, but I'm going to be a little lengthy on this morning, so. We don't want your gout and your bunions to be uncomfortable. Uh, we're still in Philippians, the third chapter, um, starting at the 12th verse, and I'm going to read down to the 16th verse. Uh, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. 
I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Verse 16, nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. The word of God is blessed. They can come in. Stay right there in the New Message Bible. Um, Y'all look, it's such an honor today uh, to have the current Newcastle County Executive, Mr. Matt Meyer, with us. Amen. Our, our next governor. So good to have him with us, Uncle, my friend. Amen. The Message Bible says it like this, the same scripture, but just a different way. And I want you guys to listen to what I'm getting ready to say now, because I think a lot of times when Paul says, although and attained and all that, we get a little confused. But same scripture, um, just a different perspective. Um, I'm not saying that I have this all together, that I have made it, but I am well on my way, reaching out for Christ, who has so wondrously reached out for me. Friends, don't get me wrong. By no means do I count myself an expert in all of this. But I've got my eye on the goal where God is beckoning us onward to Jesus. I'm off and running, and I'm not turning back. So let's keep focus on that goal. Those of us who want everything God has for us, if any of you have something else in mind, something less than total commitment, God will clear your blurred vision. You'll see it yet. Now that we're on the right track, let's stay on it. The word of God is blessed. I want to preach this morning from the subject, I'm not turning back. Father, it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, Sade, it is important for uh, us to give contextual understanding on today. Uh, for the next few weeks here in Power and Praise, um, we are preaching from a series called Finish Strong. Uh, and one of the things that God purposed in my heart this year was, you know, a lot of times we wait till New Year's Day and we say, oh, we're going to lose this weight. We're going to, you know, grow our hair out. We're going we gonna to get married. We're going to get it. You know, and we wait till January 1 to start these things. And most of us don't really get started until about February 17th. <laughs> so we've already wasted time in time doing what God has called us to do. So it is my heart's desire that this year, as we take December to be the month of prep preparation, uh, when January 1 gets here, we're already in stride. Oh, I'm coming to encourage somebody this morning. So this month is kind of like our pep rally month to help galvanize what we already know in God. We've got to know God would never have brought us this far if he was going to leave us. So over the last couple of Sundays, we have been talking from this particular passage of scripture where Apostle Paul lets the world know, I've got it all together, but I do have focus in my view. Some I's I have yet to dot, some T's I have yet to cross, but I know what my purpose is. And one of the things that I find that, that is alarming in the church, especially the African-American Pentecostal church, um, we shout and we're dancing, but we don't know purpose. Our purpose goes beyond the four walls of the church. Our purpose goes beyond invocation and benediction. We come to the church on Sundays to get a refilling to be able to go into the world and be used by God. Somebody say, I want to be used by God. Come on now, say it one more time like you mean it. I want to be used by God. Most of us hesitated in saying that because a whole lot of other folk have used us. Oh, I feel like preaching this morning. A whole lot of folk have used us and being used by people makes you uncomfortable. Being used by people makes you defensive. Me being used by people makes you apprehensive 
of people. Oh, I wish I had a witness here. You know how it is when you've been used two and three and four times. When God sends somebody in your life to be a blessing, you sit back trying to figure out what's your angle. <laughs> Love don't live here anymore. <laughs> what, is, what is your angle? Especially when you say things to remind me. Okay, yeah. So, 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 so Apostle Paul here. Uh, uh, is laying foundation on how we should get to our next. And the first thing we must understand this morning is being complacent can keep you from your calling. The first point this morning is being complacent can keep you from your calling. Webster defines complacent as self-satisfaction, especially when accompanied by unawareness of actual dangers or deficiencies. Complacent. We just get stuck in a mode of just, it is what it is. We just get stuck in just, this is just how it's supposed to be. Uh, you know, I, I, I failed 12 times before, so I expect the 13th to be a failure as well. So we get complacent. Oh, I feel like preaching this morning. We get complacent. And a lot of times in our complacency, we miss out on what God has for us. A lot of times in being complacent, we miss out on the blessing that, that God will send our way. Here if we find uh, in, in the text, Paul, the apostle, made the choice to pursue the things of God at any cost. Somebody say any cost. Apostle Paul has made up in his mind that for God I'm going to live and for God I'm going to die. And I don't care what is thrown my way, I'm going to pursue God. No matter what it looks like, my heart is fixed and my mind is made up. I'm going all the way with him. We have to take on the same uh, uh, mantra as the Apostle Paul. No matter what's thrown my way, no matter what roadblock, no matter what trap that has been set before me, I am going all the way with God. Y'all know the Apostle Paul, he traveled teaching and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. He traveled in spite of being lied on, in spite of being talked about, in spite of being thrown in jail, in spite of being on a ship that got caught in a Eurocladon and the ship broke down. He still made it safe to dry land. He didn't quit. He didn't throw in the towel. And watch this. He never second guessed his call. He knew that if God called me, he's going to qualify me. Oh, God help me here. He could have stopped after his first missionary journey. He could have stopped after his second missionary journey, but he kept on pressing. He, he could have stopped after writing the first letter. He could have stopped right after writing the second letter, but he kept on writing. He, he could have chose not to serve anymore. And last night as I was going over my notes, I began to kind of think about my own life over the last 17 years on how many times I could have stopped because things didn't work out the way that I thought they were. How many times I could have quit when I wanted to quit, but I had to understand that God would have never brought me this far just to leave me and I'm trying to behave myself because we got some real important folk here tonight but you got to understand God would have never brought you to this place in your life just to drop you off now it may be uncomfortable but God is still God it may be difficult but God is still God the weight may be heavy but God is still God every now and then when the weight gets heavy you just got to say but God is still God I don't know how I'm going to pay my bills, but God is still God. Got some pain in my body, but God is still God. There's some confusion going on in the land, but God is still God. And that's why the songwriter writes, weeping may endure for a night, but joy is going to come in the morning. He could have chosen not to serve God anymore after being thrown in jail. Apostle Paul, better man than I ever been. He went to jail a couple times. I ain't going to jail no time. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. All you 
got to do is dangle the handcuffs in front of me. I'm telling on everybody. Oh, y'all know I tell this testimony all the time. I'm making up all kinds of stuff on all y'all. I'm like, I'm like uh, Denzel Washington was in training. I'm putting cases on all of you. He went to jail and didn't quit. Ooh, Apostle Paul is a blueprint on sustainability. He is the blueprint on no matter what happens, stay in the race. Because the race is not given to the swift. And neither is the battle given to the strong. But it's given to the one that can endure. Scripture says to endure hardness as a good soldier. I need to endure because there is something on the other side of my pain that's going to give me pleasure. There is something on the other side of my press that's going to bring victory. There is a prize that God has promised me. The prize, the prize. A prize. Not a, not a Mercedes, but a prize. Not another condominium, but a prize. You know, we think it's prizes as monetary. We think it's prizes as tangible. But if you look at the word of God, God never promised us houses and land, but he promised us two things. He didn't promise us wealth beyond riches. He promised us two things. Somebody say two things. He promised us eternal life, and he promised us abundant life. Oh, I got scripture to back me up. Uh, if you go down to St. John 3 and 16, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God didn't send his son to condemn the world, but through his son, the world might be saved. That God loved you enough to send you someone that can save you from yourself. Then if you go down to John 10 and 10, the B clause, uh, where Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and have life in abundance. You got to know God wants, wants you to have all that you're supposed to have. And you got to take it from me. More money means more problems. I know more people who ain't got no money that have peace of mind than people that got money and got peace of mind. You, you got to be careful wanting a whole lot of money. Y'all ain't going to help me preach. You got to be careful wanting a whole lot of positions and a whole lot of this and a whole lot of that. Because to whom much is given, much is required. And if you can't barely handle the what you're given now, you just better thank God for what you have. Oh, God, help me here. You got to understand God will not put more on you than you can bear. So the Apostle Paul now is serving not for accolades, but he's serving for the prize that God promised him. He wants eternal life and abundant life. Mm -hmm. The prize that God promised is greater than any pressure or pain in your press. You've got to know that if you're going to receive a prize, you've got to press toward the mark. You, you've got to put one foot in front of the other. Mm -hmm. If you're going to receive a prize, you just can't be at home in the easy chair with your feet propped up. you got to get in the race. But I wonder, wonder if you understand the Bible when the Bible says that in the race, there will be times of testing in the race there will be pain and pressure and pressure and pain is anything that makes you feel like abundant life and eternal life are unavailable or unattainable can I just talk to a few of y'all this morning here have you ever gotten to a place in your journey with God where you feel like what's the use have you ever gotten to a place where you 
question why do I press like I do? <laughs> Stuff is just supposed to always be like this. <laughs> sometime up and sometime down. <laughs> it's supposed to always be like this. <laughs> but I came to encourage the two with the hands up just to let you know. <laughs> be not dismayed. <laughs> Whatever be time. <laughs> God will take care of you. <laughs> the psalmist went on to say beneath his wings of love abide. God will take care of you. I'm getting ready to hurry up and get out of here so we can beat the rain. But is there anybody here this morning that knows in spite of what it looks like, God will take care of you? Oh, I wish I had another witness to know. In spite of the weight that you carry, God will take care of you. That's why every now and then you got to know that you know that I'm not turning back. God has been too good to me for me to turn around now. I believe it was several years ago, it was the late Andre Krauss that said, I feel no ways tired. I come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me that the road would be easy. But somebody help me preach. I don't believe he brought me this far just to leave me. I'm trying to behave myself, but I don't believe he's brought me this far just to drop me off now. I refuse to believe all the times I wanted to quit. All the times I wanted to throw in the towel. I had to understand that greater is he that's in me than he that's within the world. Do I have a witness here? That every now and then the weight gets heavy. And every now and then I feel like crying. But I have to press. Put one foot in front of the other. Because I know that God has something in store for me. I got to get out of here. But let me leave you with my last point. Ashley, can you put it up on the screen? My last point is you will never win the prize if you never put in the press. I said you'll never win the prize if you never put in the press. Press means a continuous force forward. Press means moving progressively in a specific direction. Press means it hurts sometimes, but I'm going to move forward. Press means I've been lied on, but I refuse to quit. Press means I've been talked about, but I'm going to keep on walking. Press means on the inside, I want to sit down, but the God that I serve telling me to move on. I've seen the lightning flash and I heard the thunder roar and I felt sin dashes breaking trying to conquer my soul but I heard I said I heard I heard, I said I heard, a voice telling me, fight on, fight for your sanity, fight on, fight for your joy, fight on, fight for your peace, fight on, fight for your children, fight on, fight for your marriage, fight on, there is no turning back. You got to fight for what you believe in. You got to fight because God has greater in store for you. I refuse to stop now. I'm pressing toward the mark for the prize of the high calling is in God through Jesus. Say yeah! Ah, yeah! I got to quit. I'm sorry for all that hollering. But I got to quit.
it's amazing how conversations can bring about revelation. I've never, I've never uh, professed to be one of the greatest orators in the land. Sorry, sir, I have not matriculated through the oracles of higher academia. I don't, I don't have doctorate before my name, whether earned or bought. I am just a child of the Most High. And because I'm a child of the Most High, when he speaks, I speak. on last Sunday and a question was asked of me and how I got a whole message out of Double Dutch. Y'all remember Double Dutch? Anybody here used to Double Dutch? All right. All right. Watch this. Double Dutch, help me. Where, where are my Double Dutch at? Okay. All right, all right. Help me. Double Dutch never starts once you get inside the room. Okay. Double Dutch don't start. Double Dutch starts pre-jump. My God, my God, today. Pre-jump. You like this kind of preaching? That's, that's your daddy? Who is he to you? That's your boss. That's a good answer. That's a good answer. <laughs> Double Dutch starts pre-jump. Okay? Pre-jump is before I even put my feet on the floor. I've got to, in my mind, prepare for what I'm getting ready to do. I've been watching folk double dutch all week. And I thought double dutch was just you just get it and you do this. Y'all know they got some double dutches. They get two people in the rope at one time. They're too much. I'm too big for all that. But double dutch. Jump. I got to get my mind and my feet in sync for what I'm about to do. <laughs> to be successful, now where my double dutch is at, because I want to make sure I ain't, no, I ain't telling no wrong, you know, to be successful, you can't just start in the middle. You can't start in the middle. You got to start in the beginning. What's it called? Pre-jump. And in the, in the pre-jump, you are telling yourself, I think I can, I think I can. I think I can, I think I can. I say, I think I can. It's the pre-jump. It's the pre-jump. Whole conversation in your mind with yourself before you jump. The pre-jump. You can't just jump in because sometimes, the first time, don't always go right. Roll that beautiful bean footage. Start at the beginning. Pre-jump. No, no, no. Back up, back up. That's not at the beginning. Go to the beginning. Well, y'all trying to make, y'all trying to hang me up. <laughs> y'all want to get to the good jump. No, there we go. Watch this. Watch this. Pre-jump. She's talking to herself. 
getting herself ready, making preparation. Preacher. Uh-huh. She jumps in. Look at that. Did y'all see what happened? Right at the point of jump, she guessed, second guessed herself. And because she second guessed herself, you stop it. She stumbled. See, that's what y'all want to get to, don't y'all? That's what y'all want to get to. Y'all want to get to, oh, she jumping, she jumping now. You've got to pass the point of failure. Because what happens when you first jump in, see, it's one thing to have a conversation with yourself. But when you jump in, you now not only have to have conversation with yourself, you have to have coordination with the spinner of the rope. Because at pre-jump, I trusted in myself. But now that I get in the rope, I'm trusting in the rope spinner. Trust in the rope spinner. Who is the rope spinner? He's got the whole world. He's got the whole world. Uh, that's enough. That's enough. Because y'all know the song, but do you believe the lyrics? I know the song, but do I believe that when I jump in and I fail, he still got me. And just because, can you go back to when she first jumped in? I got to hurry up. Cowboys playing for you. Wait a minute, time out. You just earned a couple votes right there. <laughs> Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. She now jumps in. And because she wasn't prepared, she failed. Stop it. One second. Pause. Pause. No, leave it right there. Don't, don't touch nothing. She didn't go back to the dressing room. She didn't go home and call her husband and say, I failed on national TV. She didn't say, I don't want to do it again. She did what? Got right back in and kept on jumping. Now hit play. Now she got it. Now, now, see, now once you get in there, now you can spin around. Look at it, she's jumping on one foot, two foot. Now she got it. You never know what you can do until you get in. You never know who you can help until you get in the race. You, my God. Just because it fails one time does not mean every time you jump in, it's going to fail. But what I will tell you is, the more you press, the better you'll get. The more you press. I got one more scripture to believe you be. Uh, when the prophet went down to Jesse house, it said there's a king that's coming out of this house. Jesse said, go down there to Planet Fitness and get my sons. One of them working on legs, one of them working on triceps and biceps, one of them working on cardio. Go get them all and let them stand before the prophet. They came in. Let me cut this. Well, now leave it right there. But sometimes. I'm trying to get in. Go. Go 
get my sons, my strong, robust sons. Them both, fetch them. Them six pack having boys. Them broad shoulder having boys. Because surely, all this money, I don't pay for gym membership over the years. Surely it's one of them. I'm sorry, Shawty. I hope you told about this. Story. The Bible says uh, that when they lifted up the ram's horn as a sign of prophetic accuracy, the oil would flow. The Bible said that as he went from sun to sun and lifted up the horn, the oil didn't flow. I'm trying to be in the book. But can you imagine the father? That got to be one of these. The prophet said, surely there must be another. The father said, oh, well, let's go over these boys again. You don't, you don't want that one. The Bible said David uh, was a ruddy child, R-U-D-D-Y, and with all of continents. W-I-T-H-A-L. I mean, he didn't look like much. Had a little belly. You know, single woman, better stop looking for them six packs. Look for your belly. There's season, there's some season in the belly. You don't want no man to spend more time in the mirror than you. Barring your Maybelline and Max Factor. Ain't gonna be no sharing of the makeup in this house. I got to hurry up. Uh, listen, what is it about David that you think he's qualified for this assignment? David said, well, and I'm paraphrasing. He said, well, I'm not tall like my brother. I don't Work out like my brothers. Matter of fact, I don't even look like them. So if you can tell us all that you're not, where are your qualifications? He said, well, I'm so glad you asked. A couple months ago, I was tending to the sheep on the backside of the mountain. And a lion jumped out to eat the sheep. You see the scar right here? I got a scar, but the line died. A few, a few weeks later, tiger came out and tried to eat the sheep. You see the scar right here? I got a scar, but the tiger died. Yesterday, bear came and tried to devour the one little sheep that got away. You see this right here? I got a scar. But the bear dead. I have some scars that say I'm ready for the fight. And for some of y'all here this morning, you've got some scars of what you've been through over the last 30, 40, 50 years of your life. For some of you here this morning, you've got some scars of how the enemy tried to come in and stop the plan of God for your life. You, you've got some scars, whether it's physical scars or, or mental scars, but you've got some scars. And all the scars represent is when the enemy tried to come in like a flood. The Spirit of God lifted up a stand. Oh, yes, yes, yes. There's no, no turning back now. No, I made some mistakes. I, I let my mind and my feet get confused, and I and I messed up the first time. But but I, I got myself together, and that's why power and praise. As I close the message, that's why uh, we're getting ready in December. 
We don't have time to wait till January to get here to get ourselves together. We're going to get ourselves together before Santa Claus slide down your chimney. Y'all figured it out. Y'all ain't got no chimney. Figured that one out. I'm going to get myself together. I'm going to get my mind and my feet in alignment. And not only am I going to get my mind and my feet in alignment, I'm going to get my flesh and my spirit on the same page. Because for some of us, our flesh is willing, but our spirit is weak. Our spirit is weak because we don't know if we're qualified for what God has for us. But you've got to know God would have never put you in position if you weren't ready. There's this thing called on-the-job training. There are some things you just... Some of my best things that I've learned as a pastor came after I started pastoring. I didn't go to school to be a pastor. I didn't buy the book, Pastor for Dummies. I mean, some folk had. Some of my greatest lessons were learned after I got in the race. 17 years later, and I'm still learning. That's why I get so hard, heavy hearted when folk that ain't never did this job sit in a low seat and try to tell me how to do my job and never done nothing. Pastoring is hard. Leading people is hard. I got to figure out who you are every day. Especially them days that you don't even know who you are. You mad at me because I don't know who you are and you don't know who you are? How that sounds. 2024 is going to be a great year for us. Hear me, hear me. But it's not going to come without scars. Got to go through to get through. Got to go through some things. You, you, what me say it again? I got to go through. Got to. You, you move a little slow. Don't be too loud. I just keep on. I'm ready. I'm just checking. I, I got you. yourself. What would you do if I told you right now I'd give you a bag with a million dollars in it? Most of you will spend it in 30 days because you have no plan. You have no plan. You have no trust in God. Past today. I'm already on 2025. conversation today. I'm already on 2025, in 2026. In my life, I'm halfway through 2024. Y'all looking at me strange. Some of y'all like, I'm still on yesterday, past. I have to be in a place that wherever God leads me, I got to be ready to follow. Hear me, hear me. If I get a call right now, if I get a call right now, there's $50,000 for you to be in Houston by tomorrow morning. Guess what? I got to be ready to go. My, one of my mentors lost his best friend last year. And I got the call at about 8.30 in the morning. Preached here, preached down to Laurel, and by 6 o'clock I was at Baltimore, Washington International on a plane going to Florida. I couldn't, I can't say, well, give me a couple days trying to get the money together. By the time I get to Florida, it'd be in the ground. I got to be ready. Whatever vehicle I drive when I get home, it's, it's got to be on half a tank. And if I get up in the morning and my car on E, it's going to be some trouble. Because what happens if somebody called me in the middle of the night and I got to go running? I ain't got time to stop at the gas station that might be closed. I got to be ready. I keep shoes by the door. I stay talking to God every day. I don't just wait till I get to the temple to talk to him. I talk to him in my car. Because what, what? Turn this way? Sure, no problem. And it's happened to us before. It's 
26 acres of land right up the street. Would have never seen it was for sale if God didn't tell me. Turn off 13 and go this way by the church. Are y'all with me? You got to be ready for what God. Can I say one more thing? Y'all gonna get mad, but I got to say it. Who said say it, Bishop? Praise the Lord. Stop comparing your God with your peers' God. Because they ain't the same God. Somebody say, what you mean? Well, I wasn't going to say nothing since you asked. Some folk serve the God of being complacent. Some folk serve the God of, I done made it here. That's the and if you serve in the God of this, just it. You can't be in your 20s, in your 30s, in your 40s serving the God of my senior members that who have made it. I don't expect my senior members to, to work. You don't break no sweat when you get to where they are in life. So you can't say, I'm 27, I ain't going to work. I serve God. No, the devil is a lie. We don't serve the same God. You're going to work through something. You can't get what they got if you don't do what they've done. See, you talk to the senior member, they'll tell you. Well, back in 59, I had to walk two miles to school, barefoot, in the snow, uphill, both ways. God's got it, and we going to get it. I'm going to say it again. God's got it, and we going to get it. And whatever it is, some of you stop asking God for a million dollars. That's not your lot. Some of you, your lot might be to always struggle so you can help those that are struggling. Everybody can't be what the next person is. You've got to serve the God of your salvation. Because if you're busy over here in my closet, you're going to take something out of my closet that you can't fit. And if I'm in your closet, I'm going to take something out of your closet that I can't fit. And we walking around with clothes too tight and too big. <laughs> God, we thank you today. Trust and pray, God, something has been said or done that's been edifying to these your people. Help us be what you called us to be. Help us walk a life worthy of what you have for us. Teach us how to press. Prepare us for what's in store. I pray for those today, God, that are under the sound of my voice, whether in the church or on the stream. Bless them, O oh God, in a mighty way. Pray that you meet every need in their life. Order our steps in you. Open doors, God, that no man can shut. Close doors that no man can open. Do it, God, not for us, but do it, God, so that you get the glory out of our lives. I pray today for that unspoken prayer request, that petition laid up, God, just for you. There is somebody in this room today, God, that has been talking to you and nobody knows the subject matter. My prayer right now is to hear that prayer. Dispatch your ministering angels to go and see about them, God. Meet every need, oh God, in their life. Have your way in us the more. If you do these things for us, God, we be so ever careful and mindful to give your name the praise. The glory and the honor is yours forever. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say thank God. Come on, say it one more time. Thank God. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you next week. Listen, they're shutting the feed off, but y'all give me a few more seconds. Those of y'all that are here.